Agora TV. The world is thinking. That was the prototype. Um, believe it or not, there we go. That was the, the, the very early prototype. This was before we even figured out what the superstructure material was going to be. Um, so we knew, you know, this was Andy's early, early design, and he actually came up with, uh, let me just jump through here, here's some naval architecture drawings. That was our second model we made. So that model there was based on his uh, drawings, and he could only really do that once we started to um, uh, figure out the, uh, you know, the, the properties of the material that we can mm. use for our superstructure. Yeah. And I think that was a big tipping point for me in this project. You know, this is, um, on the left here was one of the materials that we first looked at. It was an eco board. Uh, they, they marketed it as eco board, eco lumber, eco timber. Yeah. Um, it was pretty useless, to be honest with you. I saw these amazing websites with images of, you know, they said retaining walls and bridges and all these structures. And basically it's, it's mixed plastics, crushed, pressed and, you know, put into a board form. We took this, we, um, you know, this was after about 20 minutes of seeing just sagged. Mm. And I remember sitting there and going, there, there goes, you know, this project, where do we, where do we go from here? Yeah. And this was a real tipping point because I think for me, you know, very early on, everything was, I was, I was obsessed by post-consumer. I was obsessed by this idea that everything had to be post-consumer. And actually, I think one of the things that we've, you know, worked on and throughout this project is that actually waste is, is, is inefficient design. That's a mm -hmm. f fundamental principle. And, um, and the second was actually, you know, with the materials. I mean, I ask this question a lot and I'll ask it to you guys. I mean, the question is, is plastic the enemy? You know, I mean... Can, can it be the enemy? Because it's it, everywhere. It's so ubiquitous, yeah. right? So the question actually, is plastic the enemy or is it our inability to understand how we use it? And more, more importantly, how we dispose of it? So at that point, it was like, well, who's actually using smart materials? Who's out there, you know, engineering smart plastics? And so there was a pause in the project and there was a, a moment where um, uh, at the time there was a, a, a um, you know, uh, the boat builder and, and Matthew, our exhibition manager, uh, went off. I said, just, we've got to go and find people who, you know, are inventing smart materials. And so they went off and scoured around Europe and, and, and eventually, you know, came back with some fabric material that was a, a PT fabric. Um, and basically, you know, that was the start of, I think, the real deep innovation into the material science side of the project. And that was, you know, again, another lesson that innovation comes from the most unexpected kind of places. And I would have never known that we would have, you know, engineered this new material that I think has revolutionary, world-changing applications in the yeah. real world now. And, and, you know, the fact that it's not a composite, the fact that you are using self-reinforcing PET, which yeah. is then, you know, you've got all these different ways of using it. The models showing the board and the... Yeah, the, there's... It means that at the end of the day, you've got less materials to recycle. So you've upcycled, and then when you pull your boat apart and recycle, yeah. less different materials, all the same Exactly. It's a mo it's, 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 a, it's a monopolymer, it's um, which is, uh, you know, it's like a, it looks like a fiberglass. A lot of people, when they come to the vessel, they look at it and say, oh, nice fiberglass, yeah, you know, it it's a pity like you had to use it. Um, what you've actually got is you've got... Um, um, a monopolymer, you've got a self-reinforcing plastic, so it uses its own matrix to support itself. So it's, um, you know, self-reinforcing plastics have been around since the 80s, but no one's really ever taken them out of a laboratory. So what we did was we tinkered and, you know, th th those early shots here on the left, this was in our, um, there's the fabric and there's a core foam. So we pulled some foam from a company called Alcan, which is a, 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 an aluminium company. Yeah. Uh, the fabric here is a PT fabric uh, and we tinkered in our rental house in San Francisco and I remember, uh, you know, he was chucking stuff in the oven and burning it and the, na the landlord actually lived upstairs and he was like, what are you guys doing? Are you smoking Breathing pot in there or something? And we were like, no, we're actually just burning plastics. And he was like, uh, get out of our apartment. Um, but the, um, the, the, uh, the plastic, as you can see, I mean, you know, the, the real world, this up here on the right, we just designed this because we were coming to Australia, thought it'd be kind of cool to design the first fully recyclable uh, post-consumer 100% um, uh, PET surfing, uh, cool. a skateboard we made there uh, before we left on the project. So what it does is, as I said, it's self-reinforcing. So it uses its own matrix. There's two fibers. There's a high tenacity fiber, which is your strength fiber, um, which is like the equivalent of glass in fiberglass. And, and then you have a matrix, which is the equivalent of your epoxy um, in fiberglass. And the epoxy has a different melt point. So it basically melts around these high tenacity fibers. Um, and it means that you get this very rigid laminate once you start the fabric under pressure and heat. And, you know, we spent a lot of time tinkering. We did a lot of R&D, uh, more D than R, uh, <laughs> basically, which means it comes with some mistakes. And, you know, now we are seeing uh, the development of this material, which we've actually called Ceratex, which is basically self-reinforcing textile, because that's what it is. I mean, it's interesting because at the moment in cars, there's a lot of experimentation in Europe and in the States with hemp fibre yeah. and using hemp instead of... But, but 
that's still got to be in with resin and in yep. with another material, so yep. the recycling at the end of life is still that's tricky, whereas yep. this thing just arcs straight over the top straight and just top. says, here's the solution. No, and, it's, it's really you know, and, and, it's and I think this is super exciting. I mean, we're just talking today and it's blowing my mind. I mean, I haven't, you know, that's, I'm definitely not the brains behind that. There's two guys, I don't even know if they've arrived yet. Um, who are going to come down? Yeah, there was some traffic. We actually had a meeting earlier. Uh, Mike and Greg, they may come and, and they're going to bring some samples and stuff along for, you know, a bit of show and tell. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, we're talking today about containers. I mean, just like, you know, oh, imagine huge. making shipping containers out of 100% post-consumer plastic, yeah. $6 billion worth of plastics thrown into landfill every year.